I'm Rick Holtz, and this is my wife, Colleen. We met when we were kids, and the rest is history. We had six kids, and then adopted five more from Costa Rica. Life with 11 kids is interesting, to say the least. Every day is a new adventure. This is Holata Holtz. We just got back from the, well, we had two visits today. First, two big hurdles. One, we had to get the passports, the Costa, the Costa Rican, Rican passports. The Costa Rican passports for the Ticos. And then we had to go to the U.S. consulate to get their visa. Visas. And the visa is what gives you we permission. We got it. You I got to tell it first. We got the visas. We're going home. We're so excited. Anyways, uh. the two and a half years, we've reached our, our milestone, and that's bringing our kids home. That's a great feeling. I mean, the bus driver's just like, y'all gotta feel so good yeah. right now. Y'all gotta feel so good. He kept saying congratulations. And it really is. It's it's quite a milestone. And uh, really, really feel good. Yep. Feel good. We're excited. excited. We got in the car right after we got done with the consulate and immediately we started calling and texting <laughs> our entire family, friends, our, just everybody. And just the phone is ding, 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 I mean, ding, I didn't ding. even, I didn't even look up the whole trip. We were just, just in celebration mode, just celebrating with, uh, uh, with family, letting them know that we're coming home. Everybody's excited. It's a milestone moment. And I think um, we were talking to the driver on the way back to the house and I was explaining to him that it's really cool how the United States does it. It's like they're still Costa Rican citizens, but the minute their foot hits American soil, they become an American citizen. And that's, uh, I think that's, that's pretty cool. That's a really cool. neat thing. That's pretty cool. We landed on February 20th and within a couple weeks COVID hit and we had had big anticipation of you know introducing our new children to the world, uh, <laughs> taking them to uh, events, you know going to church, uh, exposing them to um, a lot of the sights and scenes that you would experience when you come to the U.S. and <clears throat> we didn't get that experience. And it uh, shut down. Yeah. and With COVID and what would you say about COVID? I would say that it inhibited our ability for our kids to go to church, to socialize, to make friends, to... But um, in a way, I feel like COVID was uh, was good because it made us uh, really slow down and bond and be home. And That's true. We've gotten a lot of time at home connecting with mm -hmm. the kids, doing projects around the house that uh, we otherwise probably would not think, have I done. I think we would have come home and I would have went straight back jumped, to work like immediately straight right back in. to work which I think I still did but <laughs> maybe not to the extent so um, right. being being at home has has been a, a help these first eight months just uh, integrating the kids in we didn't really know what to um, mm -hmm. expect coming home either so it's like um, you know we talked about it earlier earlier on when we were in Costa Rica about um, the honeymoon phase, you know, this, this, uh, uh, it's a real thing, but we're eight, nine months with the kids. And we and still are in honeymoon phase. I feel like we're still in honeymoon phase. Uh, for us, one of the biggest, I think the biggest hurdles is education. Like we, we want them to hit the ground. 
uh, and start figuring out where they are educationally, like um, what grade level should we be teaching them. And, and on top of that, we've got the language barrier, <laughs> and that's, that's a significant barrier. Uh, so early on, um, we had a family that um, actually one of the young girls that works for us in our in our marketing department, her mother had volunteered to kind of step up and help out with the Spanish to English teaching as a tutor you know, to come into the home and to tutor the children. And that, to do the testing to see where they would be too. Right, and she's a homeschool mother as well, and I believe they have 10 children <laughs> and um, gen a genuine love for the Lord. And so she, she came in and just started working with the kids. She, she's fluent in Spanish. Uh, and was able to um, really get down to their level and mm -hmm. really start working on their English skills and dramatic improvements, oh, my dramatic improvements. In fact, Benjamin, um, who uh, there... He was five. He was five, so uh, his Spanish wasn't all that great either. <laughs> so, but now he's like, he doesn't remember his Spanish. So yeah. now there's, there's this little bit of this element that, okay, once we, we want conquer... We keep their Spanish. We don't want them to lose it. So once we conquer the English, then it's it's going to be going back yes. to reteach them their Spanish. Like we were driving. Yeah, it was really funny though because they went and got their haircuts at a Puerto Rican barber shop, and the guy was talking Spanish to Joseph. I mean Jacob, and Jacob was like having a really hard time flipping back and forth. Yeah. And he was he was so worried the rest of that day. He was just like, I've forgotten. I've forgotten. And he was just kind of would go off in a dead stare. <laughs> <It> <laughs> he was, was very funny. worried about forgetting. Yeah with the kids um, coming back and seeing the, like just being purposeful even within business is like, uh, that's real important uh, for us is to be purposeful in business, to, to teach them, um, and this is all of them, my children, is to teach them uh, proper work ethic and a desire to do work and to do it well and to give your best uh, in everything that you do. And so we wanted to start uh, Jacob out in the wood shop and just let him get in there meet some of the guys um, and we asked him what do you what what would you be interested in mm -hmm. I mean you know there's pottery or candles or stitching or or marketing or mar yeah what, videography we, we I were mean, like what what after coming around and seeing everything what interests you and he immediately he wants to he wanted to learn the woodworking mm -hmm. he likes working with his hands mm -hmm. And so we, uh, we scheduled some time for him to, of course, he's, he's in school at this point, so we can't just let him go full time <laughs> yes, into work. Yes, we did work. summer school. <laughs> um, but we set aside some time for him to go into the, the wood shop and, and work with the guys. And uh, it was so cool. It was like we, we, uh, we put him in there for the first couple of days, and he was working. And he's a hard worker. You can tell mm -hmm. almost immediately he is very focused on his work. And I got this uh, text from uh, one of the guys in the wood shop, and he said, "You send Jacob back anytime. Yeah. He is a he's a beast. He just works and works and works, and he's very diligent." Had to make him take his breaks and his lunch. <laughs> yeah. So, and those are good compliments and things that I I take a lot of pride in when when I see that coming too. Uh, and then besides that, I, I wanted them to also spend time working with uh, my dad, um, mm -hmm. who's uh, an expert, you know, guy on the lathe, and so. They've been going over to my dad's house, him and uh, Jacob and Levi have been going over there. And as soon as Jacob and Levi are working with Grandpa, all of a sudden Joseph's like, I, I want to do something. And, and I want to <laughs> work. And Judah was like, I want to do something. <laughs> and they all want to do something. So they're like, we want to work with Grandpa Daryl. So we sent him over to Colleen's parents' uh, house. And uh, they Joseph put, like, and engine in they the put car. a new, a new transmission in a car. He's so an expert there. welder. So they, yeah. did, they haven't welded yet, but... <laughs> They did a but they lot get to do of, a mechanical work. Yes, a lot of mechanical work. They loved it. From the beginning of the process of adoption, from the moment we made the decision to where we find ourselves right now, um, we have been blown away by the support. Mm -hmm. By, um, I mean, just going back to the adoption agency, we used Lifeline, and we were so impressed with them. And just the preparation, uh, the education that they make you take, the adoption agency makes you take in preparation for these kids coming into our home, uh, how they're going to acclimate, worst case scenarios. Uh, we've had a couple home visits uh, since, so, and we have to have home visits for the next five years. I think mm -hmm. we have a home visit every six months. And we months. send pictures um, over to Costa Rica and um, 
different things that we have to tell them things that they've learned and um, it's our first home visit was amazing she yeah. just kept saying okay well what problems are you having and we're like we're just not no, having we're, any we're problems not. well what about this and no i don't think she believed us like <laughs> she would ask the same question in different, different ways. ways and we're like there's nothing. and it was funny is because we we told the kids she's like your kids can be here when we're doing this interview or they can they can go do stuff every one of the we kids were like well we don't care what do you want to do i mean we were and circled <laughs> circle with all of our family there and then she starts asking them questions and she's they're given the same answer so it's like it it was just it was just neat to it see. It has been beautiful. It's been a neat process, and um, the our time in Costa Rica oh. was very special. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I love that we had to stay six weeks, mm -hmm. and that it it that was the requirement because we really love the culture and yes. we love the people and we loved uh, we loved the atmosphere and, and loved would love to go back. Yeah. You know, and, and that brings up another point. Uh, as we've started sharing some of these videos in our story, you know, you, people are curious and they, they don't understand sometimes the questions that they ask or they seem offensive, but oh, it doesn't offend us. But one of the biggest questions is that we get is like, well, why Costa why? Rica and why not the United States? Why didn't all why, these kids here in the United why, States? I mean, there's a great need here. Why did you go outside of the country? And absolutely. And, and from the beginning of the process, we were open to anything literally anything we were open to uh working with with a birth mother if the birth mother wanted to be in, involved in the life then let us pour into the child and the, and birth, the birth mother. mother let us love on them both and we were okay with that and we wanted that but when you start the process of adoption um you walk through the doors that open to you at the time that you're wa walking mm -hmm. through the process so i didn't go into it with the mindset that i'm only opening my heart to the united states that's it my heart was open to anywhere, any place. We were just going to be obedient and walk through the doors that open. And so it's not that we're anti-American children <laughs> or we just love children. It's not that we, we don't see the, the need in America is great. It's great everywhere. Mm -hmm. And it's just our heart is just to love on children. And so I think the whole process <laughs> has been, been neat to see because I felt like it's changed my heart as well mm -hmm. through the whole process. Like I've I've grown more in love with with all of my children, with even my wife, and just serving her and seeing her in a different light as well. And it's it's just grown us so much as a family, um, so much more than I think if we would have just kept doing our own thing. Um, this has really yeah. improved the family as a whole. Um, the family has stepped up. Yeah, yeah I was going to say the siblings have all meshed perfectly. It's still... Those first few weeks in Costa Rica, that's how it is. I'm not to say that we don't have problems. I mean, just yesterday <laughs> I saw Judah pushing Benjamin to the ground and King of the Mountain and just being mean. And I'm like, I have to address he's it. He's like, but Dad, I was playing King of the Mountain. And yes, but you were pushing too hard. He's littler than you. And it's like, you know, going through those those moments. But it's 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 just neat to see the whole family step up together. And um, Kelsey and Faith and... Uh, the older girls are stepping Madison up. Madison FaceTime, and she FaceTime calls every day. Every day, so it's like they <laughs> so have she's a... she's somebody, and, and somebody will be out in the yard with her on the phone, taking her <laughs> everywhere, showing them everything. So she's she's still she's, building relationships yes. with everybody in the family and maintaining that. And She showers them with gifts every birthday. Her and Isaac send birthday gifts mm -hmm. like crazy and, and letters and... Um, and she's painting, so Madison's painting a lot because Hawaii's really locked down. So um, they all have put in requests of <laughs> what they want Maddie to paint. And I'm wanting to sell them all. And, and she, he wants to. <laughs> they're like, Dad, you can't sell my painting. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Anyways, it's, it's been really, uh, really good. It really has been good. I, I think that there's a lot more to unfold. And I mm -hmm. think there'll be a lot more that has to be unpacked. Mm -hmm. Um, but little by little, mm -hmm. be patient. Day at a time, just walk, walk through them and try to be faithful. Already there's talks of, you know, as our kids grow up and move out, that <laughs> we probably won't stop adopting. We, we, want to, we want to pour our life out in pursuit of children. And so we want this home to be a place where we can raise many sons and daughters uh, for His glory. And that's that's our heart and so and one day when we're too old and we can't adopt anymore because there is an age uh, different countries have different ages so um, 
then maybe we look at um, doing something different or moving out of the house and then giving the house to one of the kids that can carry it on and can keep moving forward with, with loving uh, the orphan and the widow. I think that's what it's all about.